everyone. I just had my talk kind of recording all of you, so you could all say hi to me. Say hi to them. Wait, I just want to get the perfect angle for my social media, otherwise it won't look good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So why am I doing all of this, right? Why am I starting my TEDx talk using my 18 minutes having my smartphone camera as my first mediator, as my first interaction with all of you. Well, let's connect it up, let's start. I'm basically part of this former generation that has this constant fear of missing out on things. This generation that needs to be physically and digitally in spaces nowadays. After all, it wouldn't be validated that I'm actually here having a TEDx talk if I don't post on social media. And don't get me wrong, but we have all been there. We all needed to once post a picture or a video to validate that we have been into places. And it kind of gives this idea that our smartphones are kind of become an extension of our bodies, an extension of our hands. They're just here, ready, waiting for us to click and start interacting. As a famous philosopher, Martin Heidegger from the 20th century used to say, we have ready to hand tools. And of course, that back in the 20th century, he didn't use smartphones as an example. But he used the example of what a hammer is to a carpenter, in a way that it is ready to hand to for his job and for his life, and it's always there handy and waiting for him to use, in which after a while he will stop contemplating and asking what is the meaning making of a hammer it is to him. And if you apply this to smartphones, it's kind of the same idea. It's just our smartphones are just always here ready, literally in our hands for us to use, that we are not contemplating or asking the meaning making of why are we even interacting with this. And so you might be thinking, but what is all this philosophical talk about smartphones, right? Why do, where do I want to lead all of us? Well, basically I want to talk about sunsets today, specifically Middletown sunsets. So it all started in 2018. I grew up in Sao Paulo, which is one of the biggest cities of South America in Brazil. I am a Brazilian. But I always had the dream and goal to pursue my life and my career abroad following my parents who have always been traveling and working abroad. And so because of that, I got accepted into a master's in communications from Penn State University and I ended up moving to Middletown, Pennsylvania. And I mean, don't get me wrong, Pennsylvania is great, but I just came from a very fast-paced life, city life, with cows, noise, 24 hours delivery. I came from a city that has more than 12 million people living on it. And then I ended up moving to Middletown, Pennsylvania. So it was a shock. And to be honest, I hated it. I hated it at first, because I came from this very fast-paced life, and I ended up in a place that I was surrounded by fields, lots and lots of fields, and some cemeteries around me. So I didn't know what to do, because I achieved my goal, I was there, but I was not enjoying it at all. So, sunsets became my routine, in which every single day I used to see those beautiful sunsets in the open fields of Pennsylvania, and I used to capture one picture, sometimes do a video. As I'm part of this former generation, I needed to validate those sunsets on my social media account. So, back in those days, I used to use a lot of Snapchat, which is a platform that allows you to post 24 hours or videos and pictures. And then soon, by the end of 2018, those Snapchats turned into Insta stories, as Instagram also adopted the same future, that you can post 24 hours of pictures and videos. And if I could add a bit more time, sometimes I used to write an intellectual description and post to my Twitter account. And if I could add a bit more time, sometimes I used to select three or four pictures as a sequence and post to my Instagram. So it all became a very mechanic and automatic routine in which I used to see those sunsets, take a picture, do a video, and share. Later, after a year, I realized that I have more than 300 pictures, 80 to 90 videos of those sunsets, and guess what? They were all forgotten into folders and files on my computer, in the storage of my smartphone, or even through my social media feed. So I stayed a whole year taking pictures and videos of the sunsets, and after all, they were there forgotten. I had no idea what to do with those pictures and videos. And so this started to make me think that we are actually becoming the tourists of our everyday lives nowadays. 
in which everything is so worth capturing, so worth sharing, every moment, every instant that we are living nowadays, we have our smartphone cameras mediating our moments. And so with all of that, but there's a problem, because back in those days, when tourists used to have one camera, even digital camera, and take hundreds of pictures, and then later there was a whole social gathering of you showing those pictures to people who were not there experiencing those travel moments with you. Today we have a problem that we have mediated networking objects. As a famous media theorist, Jose Van Dyke, once stated in her work, Memories in the Digital Age, we have mediated networking objects in which it's not about a camera anymore. But we have a smartphone camera that with one click we take a picture, with another click we start to edit it, then we start to share, and then we immerse into a whole new networking and connectivity while reality is just passing by through our eyes. After all, I used to stop, see those sunsets, take a picture, and then soon get immersed into this whole digital connectivity. So this all made me think, was I really participating in the sunsets? Was I really there behind all those filters and frames that I was interacting with? Was I really remembering the true experience of the sunsets captured in my image behind my post? So this all made me think that we are actually living in liquid modern times. As Sigmund Bauman, a great philosopher, once stated, we are living in liquid modern times, in which, if you think about a wave, we have been hit with connectivity, in innovations, and interactions every single day. And like a wave, we are just going with the flow of things, because we have no time and space to even question why we are interacting with all this digital technology. Because every single day is this digital effluvia of new innovation, new social media. We started with smartphones with one camera, now we have smartphones with three, four, or five different cameras, and so many features for you to capture and register your moments. But there is also a problem. As I stated, we have become a society that is characterized by temporariness, looseness, and short term behaviors. So this all made me think, because after all, I was there experiencing those sunsets, framing it, and filtering it with my smartphone. So this all made me think that I was actually living my fluid digital moments. So what did I do with all of that? I started to research, because after all, I was doing a master's in communication. And it became my ongoing and passionate project, Digital Moment Liquid Experience, in which I'm researching, applying theories in digital media, communications, and philosophy to the phenomenolo phenomenology field, and I'm analyzing how we are using our smartphone cameras and how this is impacting the way we are experiencing and sensing our moments and realities. And then a fun fact started just to happen. The more I was researching about it, the more I started to feel connected with photography. Because photography has always been part of my life. I grew up following my parents on trips and living abroad with them. And I always had photography and videography as part of my multicultural experience, as part of expressing all those moments and realities. But somehow from 2016 until 2019, I was so immersed into my digital technology, into digital cameras on my smartphones, that I was not feeling that attachment anymore to photography. So the more I was researching, the more I was feeling connected again to what photography means to me. And so, I start to observe and take pictures of tourists around the world. And then picture by picture, places by places, I start to kind of search for this artistic voice in which I could exemplify the fluidity of our digital moments into my pictures and videos. And with all of these experiments, I started to design an interactive video and picture exhibition about my digital moment and liquid experience which led me to here as a first year MFA student in the digital media and design program with the passionate goal to pursue my life and my career as an academic professor in digital media, communications, design, and to continue my work with exhibitions and filmmaking around the world. So you might be thinking about how. How did I connect with all of this, right? From sunsets to feeling disconnected to restart research and kind of find a path for my life which I can guarantee that I'm so sure and so passionate about. So how? Well, my advice to you is simple. I simply start to stop, observe, and feel my surrounding and my encounter. 
As if they start to pay attention to my perceptions and sensations, prior mediating any moment in my smartphone camera, prior framing. As a famous media theorist, Roland Barthes used to say, what does my body know about photography? And I kind of start to apply the same approach to my everyday routine with the smartphone. I start to kind of think about and feeling, how, my, how does my body was feeling prior mediating with any digital connectivity? And you might say, but I'm Luisa, this is such an easy advice. You're kind of asking us to meditate, to stop, observe, and feel. But it's exactly because of how simple it is that it's becoming so hard for us to achieve. Because it became so natural for us to simply have our smartphones handy, near, ready for us to connect, that, this, that we are actually missing out on things that are not external to us, that is not about being and framing and post, we are actually missing out on things that are so internal to us, that are so part of our sense as human beings with a body that can feel, that can perceive and sense a reality. And so, although we'll be talking here about sunsets and about my path, we are actually talking here about something way deeper. We are actually talking here about self-evaluation. As Nietzsche, one of the greatest philosophers of our time, used to say, to evaluate is a founding act, is a beginning, is a foundation, is a solid base that we all have within ourselves of self-evaluation. We are actually talking here about how to find our sense of connection through the fluidity of our digital disconnection. And it's not easy, it's demanding, it's complex, but it's exactly because of this complexity that we can achieve simplicity and find significance in our lives. And so, I'm here as a friend to give you a kind advice to disconnect it all, even for a moment, and start to observe and feel what events will lead you to connect the dots in your life. And so I'm here as my final approach to all of you, and I would like to ask you, what is your sunset? This was mine, and I'm open to you. Thank you very much.